Um, we're going to be hearing from different, uh, all names I think, uh, projects today, projects and initiatives, people who are involved in um, organising alternative ways of producing things, consuming things, living, uh, organising housing arrangements and stuff alternatively. We're going to hear from lots of different people, uh, six different projects. I think we'll do it so that we have three presentations and then some discussion, and then a break for coffee, and then three more, and um, uh, more discussion, and then lunch at uh, 12.30. Um, that's the morning program. I think, uh, should I say something about lunch? Should we go over there for lunch? Was that the idea? Yeah. Okay. The next building for lunch. Uh, and then in the afternoon, there's going to be a debate also over there. Um, Alright, I think we should make a start. Um, question from, uh, <laughs> this way out there, from Institute for X is going to say something about where we are today. And then uh, we'll go over to the uh, uh, first three presenters. It's going to be if this order is all right to do, it's going to be floating cities, and then the roots, the archival frontier, and then uh, we think activism, and we'll put them in a bunch like that, and then have it together. So, yeah. Okay. And if, uh, if you have slides, I can just help you put them on the, the computer. Anyways, uh, just wanted to say something about where we are. The, we are at Institute for X. It's an open platform for arts and culture and businesses. We started back in, what was it, 2009 now? Yeah. Gonzalez was also back in the days. This is uh, almost how it looked <laughs> yeah. back then. It was very empty back then. There was just an old abandoned freight train station. And we got this key. Oh. <laughs> we got, Kill the, uh, we got the, the key uh, for a week in the festival the party week uh, to do one project about public furniture in public space and uh, we did a big project the year before in Copenhagen and uh, the Aarhus Municipality also wanted something similar it was like a temporary city they just didn't have so much money so they gave us a key instead and uh, the way that it's always been a story if it, if it, if it was spotted or not or if it was occupied or not uh, Mas Peter who's the daily leader still he says like we used precedent rhetorics, so we just said, okay, we're going to be here for a week, and then we stay. And then that was kind of just a story, and the municipality didn't really uh, come and check on us for some time, so when they came three years later, two, two and a half years later, the, the head of the, of the properties, he was like, what the fuck are you guys doing? There's you know, projects everywhere, almost, more, more, maybe more in these houses here. Um, yeah. Do you guys pay rent? Yes, today we pay rent. In the beginning we didn't pay rent and we didn't pay electricity either. Yeah. Which meant that sort of all of a sudden they sent like this huge bill which we said, okay, we cannot pay this because we had no agreement. And basically also we didn't have a contract for, I think, until two years ago we got the first paper contract. So somehow it's, it's a good example of some, citizen, some municipal, we call them heroes, that they really dared to come down and make agreements uh, eye to eye and like trust that people could do something really interesting in the, in the space if you just let them have free, free, uh, free, free space. And somehow it evolved from the A house and then the B and so on. So, so the, the letters that the, 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 the buildings have here is also the, 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 the sequence that we, we took them over. So today there's more than I think it's I think it's uh, 90, 95 rental spaces, like tenants, and about the same amount of these CBR numbers, so like the registration numbers for either associations or businesses. So today it's becoming more and more, uh, you could say, uh, settled in a way. Uh, back when we were here in the beginning, it was very kind of disorganized. There wasn't necessarily an association or an administration taking care of anything. So it was very, very free. So People still, and it's still like that today, people can organize in different ways. Um, somebody over there can do something that we have no, no idea about in the, in, the central, in the central office, which is really, really fun. 
money because suddenly there's like a guy growing insects in that corner or somebody doing, I don't know, rabbits down there. Uh, so a lot, a lot of good surprises. Um, we insist on very few rules. One of them is to keep an open attitude. We are in a public space, but with private sort of uh, rentals for a very low price, of course. I think some of these studios are 500, 800 crowns a month. Some people stay, uh, some people live here uh, as a part of their work. They have a small living space, which is actually not allowed either. And so when we tell this story uh, with municipal uh, uh, guys in the, in the room, we, we tend to not say that. Yeah, it's just a uh, working space for you. Yeah. And there's, this is just a mapping of what kind of spaces there are. There's a lot of different things. Today we work really closely actually with the mayor because it's become a very big political problem, this area, because it's being developed as well. It's a really, really huge uh, piece of land. There's a lot of open space out there, but we're really, really central in the city. And um, so we try to work top down and bottom up at the same time. We believe that it's really important to have somebody in the system from a really high position that is somehow backing the, the bottom up project. So otherwise, we try to shoot at different departments and like something in between, but it always stops somewhere because they don't have the mandates to go on with some projects. So we need really the biggest priority from, from the mayor and then we have sort of quite free hands to do what we're doing. Uh, boring plans, blah blah blah. <laughs> I think uh, what I'm just going to say is that um, we try to have this idea of uh, like don't ask what you're supposed to get from your municipality or your city, but ask really what can you do for your city. Uh, in the sense that it should be everybody's idea and feeling that they can just go and do something in public space. This is our main kind of mission to to reclaim public, the use of public space. Um, I think. Well, I don't know. I don't think we have so much time now to go into like the city development. But anyways, the idea that we have here is that. Instead of making like an overall, like a super big master plan to build an area, uh, we look at like temporary uses of the of the place, and then some of those things are then built into the permanent uh, city. So that's what we're trying to do here. Even though there's going to be an architecture school, like <laughs> kind of half here on this area that we have, uh, and some production school out there, it's uh, we're trying to see how can we how can we keep this kind of kind of an undergrowth of a lot of projects down here where we don't do this like they do a lot in Copenhagen where they see a project or a building or somewhere and they sort of just bulldoze everything and then they build from new, uh, like new building, new houses. We really try to sell this idea of like let's try and have a continuous, like, con uh, continuous development where maybe the big buildings that are finished is the same product but with this model down here you have like a, a, an undergrowth of a lot of small yeah, I think that's basically it. Any questions? Yeah. Um, I'm coming. I live in the Netherlands, so it's interesting to see your sort of tactics for how to to deal with the city. Because as the Netherlands changes, I think people will have to start thinking in that direction rather than, for example, Sweden, which isn't such a long-term option anymore. Then I was wondering, do you have examples in others of projects that are like this that are, that are a bit further along in the progress? Because I'd like to know if it is actually possible to successfully get to successfully stay in some way mm -hmm. within kind of all the upper towers coming up around. Yeah, I don't think we have some good examples really. Um, the South Harbour has a lot of this kind of a uh, lot of individual creative entrepreneurs and stuff. And they, but there's the same kind of plan that's going on there, so they're also getting developed a lot of like new housing. And there they are very, very, a bit more conscious about trying to keep some of that feeling. They kind of have the same year and the visions and the plans, but it's really interesting to see what, what happens then when they actually start the development, because they usually just use the tools that they always have. <laughs> and, um, so we don't really have some good, good examples. Maybe we're looking more to Berlin, for instance, with the yeah. uh, Uferfuck track or places like that that started really from the bottom up but has got to stay somehow. 
it's difficult to put the, the focus, like why should we keep this space when a developer can buy it and build some multi-million building projects. So it really needs some political, somehow, uh, attention. Yeah, maybe because it's Amsterdam, maybe, really, because uh, the debate yeah. now is like, even in the mainstream media, front page news, why is the city becoming boring? Because yeah. they're realising that they're losing all the... And everything is moving out because of yeah. this gentrification. Yeah. And, and, yeah. I have, I'm from, Co yeah, I'm from Copenhagen, but I was just wondering, um, based on the aesthetics of things, do you work with people from Bureau of YouTube? It's actually the first slide of Bureau of YouTube, because there was a, we were a group of people coming from Copenhagen and going here. And a lot of people also from Bosch, uh, I think the idea here was that we could take some of the good things that were in Copenhagen and then do a kind of uh, Jutlandish version, <laughs> where it's a little bit more. I don't, I don't think the, that people don't have maybe the same kind of ambitions of being like a really true, like countercultural idea. We also, because we incorporate, for instance, commercial projects, it's yeah. fine for us to have people who are doing cultural stuff. They're adding something to the neighborhood, but it's also somehow they have a, they want to make money like somehow in it. They, they has to have some yeah. kind of economy in it somehow. So it's Grow. Well, it's interesting that you say that, that this is like a Jutlandic version of Bajpa's looking. Yeah. Because Bajpa's looking, the core of the people who started it are actually all from Jutland. Yeah. And like, they're like, who is this Copenhagen like, but they're all Jutlandic. And then a lot of the users are like, international people. Yeah. But what they did, in terms of like this more commercial aspect of entrepreneurial, is that they started to be for free, which is now in yeah. Jutlanda. That's like the faction. Which is also of like a sister organization of this. Yeah, I get it. a lot of interaction. Yeah. And that's also a good example where they also, in the end, it was sold yeah. and then redeveloped and there was no. And now actually the municipality wants to create a culture center. At the Yeah, because there was a plan to build a, a storage, a storage yeah. hotel. Yeah, yeah. And then those plans were <laughs> somehow cancelled. And now the municipality is getting, ah, okay, maybe this onboard field is a bit of a Cultural center, that's a really fun. I'll take one more brief yeah. question and then if there's more questions after we'll, we'll have to take it into the debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, I was interested do you have volunteers uh, working in here and how many and how many regular members you have in here? Right. Yeah, it's a very good question because we don't have anything registered in that sense. And people don't have paper contracts also when they rent. Some people have, for instance, we have Camping Permaculture Office, which is their own association, they build their own space. I think they're around 30 people, and they're all volunteers. Also the food, the, like, the food cost is here. Mm -hmm. There are also people working in the daily kind of minimal administration that are volunteers. But to put a number is really difficult, maybe like 100. Okay. I would say there's like a on-off thing. I think we're about 250 active users. Okay, nice. Yeah. Last question. Last yeah, <coughs> very short comment. Yes, because I think uh, Denmark is small in general, so the groups like from Copenhagen and Aarhus uh, merge together because we are so little people and then we want to do so much and so on. And uh, eventually it's from uh, Mars to here that people come here, like through friends of friends. Yeah. So it's a network base which is very much uh, common in Denmark. Like you don't yeah. have people in between people, it's like direct connections. But that's pretty common every, in all like activist movements. But in France, with like 60 million people, uh, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> First time I see you. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> we've got uh, yeah. should, we, should we shut down the pattern? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got, uh, you got something. You got something else? Yeah. Yeah. Aarhus is, uh, has been elected as the European city of culture. And do you think it's because of uh, X? Christian. Uh, the funny story is actually, do you remember the, uh, <coughs> the bike taxi companies? Yeah. When the delegation for, they had like a delegation from the three last year culture capital. They came here, they were actually ordered to give them a bike ride. So they went from here, yeah. they went from the main station, they came here with the, yeah. and they got on the bikes, they took a tour around here, they went to the South Harbor. So I would, I, I don't know, of yeah. course there's some, it, it gives it another feel somehow. It's, it's kind of more bigger metropolitan feeling. But, but it's next year, uh, 2017, yeah. that uh, yeah, Aarhus is getting a lot of uh, EU fundings. 
the city and then they will uh, do something, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, welcome to Floating yeah. Cities. Okay. Yeah, so we're in Floating City, Camina. And uh, for, like, for starters, we would like to like, make sure that you're paying attention and that you actually are aware of what's going on. I know it's early, so we want to uh, show a documentary, a very short one. Uh, just like uh, the one of the actions that we did last year. Um, yeah, so we're Floating City, we build uh, floats out of recycled materials and a lot of other stuff. And like it. Uh, oh, and um, does anyone know the Yes Men? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they came to Floating City last year, and this is their uh, kind of what they thought of it. Um, uh, yeah, they had uh, like um, uh, their first movie like screening in the Culture House, right. and they wanted to do something with people from Copenhagen, so they came to us. Are the speakers on? Thank you.